So I'd like to thank the LEP, the North East LEP, the North East Chamber of Commerce, NEPIC, Advanced Northumberland for their support. I know each of those organisations uh, equally recognise the importance of British Falls uh, investment to the North East economy and also uh, are really uh, as enthused as the NEA about um, British Falls commitment to sourcing locally. The fact that these partners have come together quickly to support British Vault says an awful lot about the North East economy and the North East business environment. We're certainly welcoming support and a very collaborative nature here across the North East business community. Quite simply, we're very passionate about business here in the North East. So if you could move on, Laura, please. So I'm just going to take everyone through the uh, quickly through the agenda. If you just move on to the agenda slide, um, we do have quite an a tight, uh, a tight agenda today. Um, and before I finish off with a quick uh, well, uh, finish off the welcome with a few stats about the northeast automotive sector, I just wanted to run through a, a few of the housekeeping rules. Could you please keep yourselves on mute? Um, with so many people on the call, we want to ensure there's no background noise detracting from the information being presented. If you've got any further questions, if you could put them in the chat function. And whilst we don't have quite uh, time to answer those questions today, we can feed them into uh, some activity we're doing post event into a, a, as we're going to be producing a frequently asked questions summary, um, which we'll do with British Vault and then supply that post event. Um, we'll also follow up with an email confirming all the contact points, um, so don't worry if you do miss them as we go through the presentations, that information will be shared post-event. Next slide, please, Laura. And again, so just quickly on to the, the North East automotive sector. Obviously, we are a global location for, uh, for the automotive region. We've got strong OEM presence with Nissan. And with five of the top off, uh, Hello. off uh, three of the top five off highway manufacturers here uh, in the northeast, with Caterpillar, Camazzo, and Lever. Um, we also have significant engine producing capability with Nissan's. Yes, incoming. I can hear you. Do you want me to share the screen? Sorry, we've got somebody who's not on mute there. If you could just pop yourselves on mute. So we, um, we've also got a world-class supply chain, 31 tier ones and over 200 uh, companies involved in the direct supply chain of the automotive sector. And as I've said, we are a leading location for around vehicle electrification. And with the NEA, we've got also got the largest automotive cluster in the, in the UK. I just want to focus a little bit on the electrification piece. Next slide, please, Laura. Electrification is undoubtedly a primary focus of the automotive sector. It's a global mega trend. We've seen it will be a major contribution towards the UK's net zero targets and internal combustion engines will be banned in 2030 and hybrid 2035. We recognize though that the market will, will be likely to move uh, sooner. And uh, I think JLR and Ford have recently announced that they'll be uh, fully electrified by 2025. Um, this is also reflected in, in, in the sale of EV vehicles currently. So we've seen, uh, I think it was January this year, um, when we looked at a comparison between new, car, new vehicle registration against the, the previous year, EVs accounted for 44% of all new vehicle registrations, and that was up from 15.3% the previous year. As I say, the, the Northeast is a leading, lo uh, leading location for uh, electrification. We've got Europe's most successful vehicle with the uh, Nissan LEAF. Um, we've also seen announcements about Nissan's future and the fact that uh, the, uh, the Qashqai will be electrified and they do also have plans to, to look at more sourcing from within the, uh, within the UK. We were the location for Europe's first ever gigafactory um, with um, the what is now the Envision AAC, and that was established back in 2013, and now home to British uh, British Vault uh, and their manufacturing uh, facility, which will take the Gigafactory to a whole new level in, here in the UK. We're also the only region producing more than a mil million electric motors per annum, and we've got the full capabilities around power electronics, machines, and drives. So we we really do have an awful lot of strength in electrification. 
And indeed, you can see there that 21, uh, 17 of the 21 R&D facilities that we have in this region, be in, within universities or within um, actual companies, they are focused around electrification. So we've got a great base from, what we're, from which to grow. Next slide, please, Laura. So just looking at our, our pedigree, as I say, it's not really uh, just limited to the Nissan LEAF. We've seen Qashqai, and it's been announced that that will be the first deployment uh, in the EU of their innovative e-power e uh, powertrain. Um, the Nissan Duke, um, Nissan have stated that all the crossovers, crossovers will be electrified, so we do expect the Duke to follow suit. We've seen Komatsu, who launched a, a highly successful hybrid excavator, and they've now got um, plans to develop a full electric version. That's in development in Japan at the moment, but it is being developed for the European market, so we'd fully expect that to pr uh, produce here in, in the UK and at the, the Bursley uh, facility. Libra Cranes, believe it or not, have also got an electrified um, mobile harbour crane and Caterpillar, whilst they don't currently uh, produce any vehicles in the Northeast that are electrified, we do know that there are various EV projects uh, in other areas of the UK. So we fully expect um, that Caterpillar will look at uh, electrified products in, in the near future. As I say, we're really, really excited about the, the prospects for the Northeast automotive sector and particularly around how we capitalize on electrification opportunities and build upon our world-class reputation. And it's great that um, British Vault did decide to locate their manufacturing facility here in the Northeast of England. I'm now just gonna go on and into do a quick introduction of the speakers that we've got lined today, as you can see. Um, we do have a fantastic lineup of speakers. Um, we've got Timon Orlob, Chief Operating Officer of British Vault. Timon, if I could just ask you to do a, a quick introduction and we'll just go through the various speakers and it will also give us an opportunity just to double check the, the sound as well. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for that. So yeah, Timon Orlob, Chief Operating Officer, meaning I will be responsible for procurement, supply chain, manufacturing, up to quality assurance. And yeah, going to introduce the team in a bit, bit, a uh, bit further in a while. Uh, Leon. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, Leon Dennis, head of procurement, British Vault, uh, part of the uh, procurement management team. Uh, really excited about today uh, and uh, answering questions as we work through the session. Fantastic, Jochen. Yeah, good morning, everyone. From me as well, uh, Jochen Schmierwitz, head of direct procurement, British Vault been working in supply chain and uh, procurement roles for about 30 years, different industry around the globe. And I'm really excited being part of this journey, which we're going to embark on and uh, looking forward to this session today. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy. Hi, Tracy Manicki. I'm the social value manager for British Vault. As you can tell from the accent, I'm extremely local, three miles from where the plant would be situated. And uh, it's my role to make sure that we have really good relationships with a good neighbour and uh, the community feel engaged in what's actually going on. And part of that will be around recruitment um, and making sure that they're best kept as local as possible. That's it. Trey, uh, uh, Gary? Yeah, good morning, everybody. I'm Gary Block, uh, Procurement Manager for Engineering Services, ISG. ISG, uh, the appointed main contractor for British Vol, and we're very excited and um and honoured to be involved in such a prestigious project. Fantastic. Uh, Dan? D Dan's having problems getting on, I'm afraid. Okay, well, we'll come back to Dan later. Uh, Louise? Morning all, yep, Louise Logan from NG Bailey, um, here to work closely with Tracy and support the social value outcomes on the project. Fantastic, thank you. And lastly, Alan? Morning, everybody. Alan Davidson. I'm the supply chain leader for NG Bailey Engineering. Really excited to be uh, overseeing the supply chain on the uh, Gigafactory. Thank you. Thank you. So that, that concludes the introductions. I'm now going to hand over to uh, Timon Orlob, um, Chief Operating Officer for British Vault. Timon? Yeah. So I just want to echo again what Paul said in the beginning. You know, I'm extremely pleased with this event, having that huge amount of interest. Um, you know, British Vault as a whole, it's a huge opportunity for the UK, the Northeast, but also the supply chain to be part of really building an ecosystem that showcases operational excellence, 
creates thousands and secures thousands of jobs across the UK. Let, we will have a quick look at the video to give you a better insight of the opportunity. British Volt has a clear mission to build the UK's first battery gigaplant, developing and manufacturing world-class lithium-ion batteries for electrified vehicles. This is strategically crucial for the UK automotive industry. By 2030, over 30% of vehicles will be fully electric and the market will keep growing. Batteries are complex, large and valuable systems. You need to make batteries close to where you make cars. Without UK-based domestic battery manufacturing capacity, car production will move elsewhere. British Volt's mission represents a significant investment. In fact, one of the largest ever UK industrial investments. The first phase of British Volt's production will start in 2023, and the final production phase will be on stream by 2027. We will produce enough batteries for in excess of 300,000 vehicles per year. This will support the crucial UK automotive industry, which employs hundreds of thousands of people and is worth billions of pounds in income and exports per year. A British manufacturing and development ecosystem will protect and create jobs. It will enable rapid development of technologies, more closely tailor batteries to the needs of UK and European car makers, and will build on the UK's lead in battery technology development helping to accelerate the UK towards its goal of zero net carbon. It will also support a complex and valuable supply chain. British Vault itself will create thousands of jobs and is targeting billions of pounds of revenue by the mid-2020s. The British government can support and assist us to achieve all of this with a commitment of funding, commitment to the supply chain and a supportive policy and planning regime. The size of the prize is huge. Britain has a chance to take its place at the forefront of the global battery industry. The United Kingdom cannot risk being left behind. Okay, if we go on to the next slide. Um, I don't know if it was only on my on my screen, screen, screen uh, but you know the video didn't really run smooth. So I hope you know that our construction operations and our supply chain in the future will be a bit more smoother than that. I have to say, um, as I said, you know, just expanding on a bit of the introduction. You know, we have we have uh, Leon and Jochen on the call today. You know, who are looking after the equipment procurement for the plant during the construction engineering phase, but also overall engaging with the potential long-term suppliers. So think of these two categories of one thing is the engineering and construction phase and the other thing is when we go into serial manufacturing. Um, again, we are very working very closely. That's why we have this call together with NG Bailey for engineering and ISG as a construction partner. If we move on to the next slide. So what I would like to talk to you and give, hopefully we can give you an indication today about our, our plan partners and the, and the approach. Starting with our plan, currently we're going through the planning phase for, for the site and the overall, overall Giga factory, um, getting through the phases in terms of, with the aim of commencing construction later this summer and starting production at the end of 2023. Um, it is not only building the factory and buying equipment or materials, it will also require a large amount of onboarding and training, which, as Tracy mentioned earlier, you know, we look to support local businesses and local opportunities. Our approach is working with strategic partners. The um, project is a very, very big one, not only for the UK, but for us as a business, for anyone really in this world. And this is why, you know, as outlined earlier, we have uh, Angie Bailey and ISG who will talk to you in a bit more detail. Uh, about their approach and their introductions. Um, mainly during the construction phase, ISG way will take mainly control of the, of the site in close collaboration with our, our project team. In order to get involved into this phase, we will also outline how you can get in, in, in touch with our partners today, which again, it's you know, probably of your interest to put your best foot forward and that we are aware of you. In parallel, um, we are setting up entire supply chain. So the procurement team will engage with potential supplier based on category strategies um, in order to meet target for production start, as I said, in Q4 2023. So this might, when we're going through the slides and everyone um, giving the presentation, it might give you better insight of how, you know, how your goods and services potentially apply to British Vault and our partners and how you can fit into the different phases and timing of it. 
So next, our partners from ISG and NG Bailey will give you a bit more background of their part of the project. And then afterwards, we come to the procurement team of British World. Okay, excellent. So, hi everybody. So I'm Gary uh, from ISG, and um, we're the main contractor on the project. And uh, we want to maximise the social value impacts um, on this project. So we want to encourage local employment, employing local subcontractors where we work, and enc encouraging active recruitment of locally uh, sourced labour for, for our subcontractors. Local procurement. Um, supporting local businesses and supply chain diversity, social mobility of apprenticeships, work placements and development training, upskilling young people of those, uh, retraining in order to improve their employability and work-based skills. So living wage, promoting and enforcing the supply chain compliance and paying the living wage relative to the geographical location, um, education, getting involved with local schools, colleges, training centres to support skills, development initiatives and raising awareness of careers in construction, uh, financial and pro bono support, so raising money and providing fina financial donations to local communities and charitable organisations to support community needs yeah. and providing volunteering time, um, which our staff really like to get involved with, with local charities, organisations or uh, mentoring and upskilling employees. So thank you for allowing me the time to speak today on behalf of ISG. <clears throat> Hello again, everybody. Alan Davidson from NG Bailey's. NG Bailey have been appointed as a strategic partner for the new Gigafactory. I've assembled a dedicated, experienced team of MEP design and construction professionals to proactively support the design development of the project. The plan will outline a defined scope and programme of tender deliverables for each package of work, ensuring a consistent, compliant market testing process will be carried out. Early vendor, early vendor engagement will be encouraged, particularly for critical and strategic packages. The suppliers can often influence the upstream supply chain activity, particularly on risk, cost reduction, and redesign, use of alternative methodology and value engineering. This is obviously the first facility of its kind of this building at this scale to be built in the UK. And as we all know, this facility will be pivotal at supporting the UK's emission goal. We at NG Billy are very excited to be helping deliver this scheme. And we also look forward to hopefully engaging with you all as well. Later on the slides, I'll also touch on some of our key principles. Thank you. Yeah, good morning again. This is Jochen. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is procurement at British World. And the next slide, Leon is going to continue further with that. So what is British World Procurement doing? I mean, it is um, nothing special. It is the same what every procurement department should do. So being proactively involved in strategically sourcing, selecting and commercially negotiating and then contractually managing goods, services, equipment and materials. What is really important is that we have an overarching principle we are operating under, and that is an auditable, auditable corporate governance structure. That is extremely important for us because that will help us ensuring the compliance, consistency, credibility, and control. And to put it in layman terms, basically what it is, it helps us to pass the red face test when we're being audited. How are we doing this? We are engaging and collaborate, collaborating with our internal clients and then with the relevant suppliers and after that, we will then appoint those suppliers who are best able to meet our technical, operational and commercial expectations and hopefully exceed them. Next one, please. Hi, good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Jochen. Uh, Leon speaking. Um, so following on from Jochen, um, I really wanted to focus on some of the, the key focus areas for procurement at British Vault. Um, there's value in each of these focal areas. 
Um, so the first one is focusing on long-term and strategic relationships. And I really wanna focus on the word relationship. That's really important to us. Um, local supply chain, I think you've heard that already in some of the speakers today, and you'll hear that as a consistent message throughout. And also co-location of suppliers as well, wherever possible. There's a big focus on a sustainable, a sustainable supply chain. Um, and we're working hard to make, make that a reality. And of course, the focus on continuous improvement. So quality, performance, time and costs, these are all critical in our, in our ambitions for the future. A big one, a really important one, a critical one is our focus on uh, what we call ESG, environmental, social and governance factors. Um, I'd like to pass over to Timon. He'll share a little bit more about this, please. Yeah, so on the ESG, and Leon just gave you the acronyms already, but electrification, what we're trying to achieve here, will obviously reduce emissions in the end product where the batteries are going to be used. However, it's going to be very important for us, yeah, and as for the whole world, that together with our supply chain partners, we minimize and we strive to minimize any impact for environmental across the entire value chain. This includes energy utilization within our plant, but also our suppliers' plants. Um, as well as when we're moving goods, um, you know, either inbound, outbound, or within our production system. On the social aspects, um, our social value manager, Tracy, will talk to you in a bit more detail, especially on the local engagement. But in general, ensuring that our supply chain partners have high standards of work condition, which includes health and safety, um, but also when we engage with global supply chain partners, that we're not sourcing from areas of conflict, which is extremely important to us. I'm confident that you know locally we have come to the northeast that we are in a good place with that. In terms of governance, cover us really anti-money laundry, bribery, or corruption, but also values positive aspects such as encouraging diversity, utilizing globally known quality or operating standards in our supply chain, and how we can audit them and trace will be a factor whenever we select suppliers and set out our supply chain strategy. ESG as a whole will be really a cornerstone for British Vault given our mission. Um, and it will always take a part in our decision-making process. I will hand you over now to Tracy who will talk a bit more about the local engagement and more the social aspect of ESG. Hi there. Um, as mentioned, um, I'm very local. And um, I think what's become very clear since I've started in post with British Vault is how passionate they feel about ensuring that training gaps and skills gaps and needs are identified and, and they're plugged. And that's part of my role is to ensure that we have a, a workforce who are ready for when the, the plant opens in, in near the end of 2023. Social value is really, really important to British Vault and that is around engaging with communities. And you know it goes a lot off what um, I, ISG and um, NJ Bailey mentioned earlier about working with schools, making sure that our young people have a pathway, a career pathway when they leave school and that we're anticipating what the future careers are. Um, if we don't do that, then we don't know what skills and training are going to be needed and we're not going to have a workforce who are ready. So my aim is to make sure that jobs that will be available are as we recruit as locally as possible. Um, and I'd welcome lots of other employers to be on board. I think, you know, employers hold a very, very responsible position. And I think we could be a really strong powerhouse to make sure that we do recruit as local as possible. And it's the ripple effect that comes from that. So it's the impact on communities. It's the impact on the economy and, um, and changing lives. You know, it, it's not too dramatic to say that, that by British World coming to the Northeast, the impact is going to be absolutely massive in, in a hugely positive way. And, you know, I have said that, that at times you can sort of feel the, the, the loss. I think some people still feel the loss of industries that have gone. And um, I mean, what a fantastic replacement to have such a, a huge company with such a, a community and local mind. Um, so, yeah, so we're looking, you know, really at suppliers who can look at their, their work and, and their labour market and how, can, they, how, can they give apprenticeship positions? How are they supporting to, supply, uh, to um, recruit locally? 
And so, you know, my position, I can support you in any way as an employer if you're looking at local recruitment, um, looking to take on apprenticeships, traineeships, work placements, whatever that might look like, you know, it would be great to have some discussions around how British Bell can support in that process. So what ethos and values are being echoed all together. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. I think it's uh, now moving over to a, uh, a question and answer session. Um, obviously, uh, as part of the registration process, we provided an opportunity for, uh, for delegates to ask questions of British Vault. Um, there were lots of questions that did come through, um, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, so we've selected a number today uh, to run through. Um, some of the, the, the most popular questions and also selected a few that we felt were, were very pertinent for today's discussion. Um, so the first question, um, could you tell us about some of British Vault's uh, procurement principles you follow? Yeah, sure. So uh, thank you, Paul, if I may answer that one. Um, so the, the fundamental procurement um, principles or values are the uh, health and safety. Um, so everyone goes home safe. Um, also, um, and, and so if you think about value, value is important. Um, it's creating value, um, making sure that, as Timo mentioned, the, the goods and services are, are ethically sourced, but also that they meet our, our business requirements. So, so that's an important one, the, the, the big value. Um, ownership is really important as a principle. Um, so taking ownership, um, proactive ownership in all of the relationships as well. So. Activities like this and others and, and engagement with our suppliers and supply chain is really important and that's how we demonstrate the ownership. I think um, leadership is so critical, leadership in the behaviours that we are able to demonstrate the way that we, the way that we act, the way that we, uh, the way that we perform within procurement. And as Jochen said earlier, um, credibility is, is really important and we're able to demonstrate this on a, on a day to day. And also transparency, so transparency is very important um, and, and one of our key our key principles also. Um, the way we do things, the decisions we make, they're always built on firm governance structures and are transparent and auditable. So I, so probably to recap, it's um, safety, value, ownership, leadership and, and transparency. Thank you. Perhaps I'll invite one of the colleagues from NG Bailey or ISG to share theirs also. Thank you, Leon. I'm on David Singh and NG Bailey's. Uh, one thing that's crystal clear is that number one in our, all of our principles is safety first and foremost, which is good to see. As a key business focus, we work tirelessly to raise the profile of health and safety amongst each and individual NG Burley. And we further embed it in our culture for our supply chain. Our responsible procurement charter outlines a sustainable supply chain focus that addresses opportunities such as ethical sourcing, cutting waste, including packaging, working collaboratively with suppliers to achieve the customer's goals. Tender rules and engagement, a third and strategic supplier relationships are sponsored at our senior management level. And communication between both parties at all levels is frequent and is very important to us. It is important that we talk to our supply chain partners as early as possible and seek commitment to price before issuing tenders for engagement. Early engagement will allow the supply chain to drive innovation which is critical on a manufacturing facility of the future like this, as we are sure we all agree. Supply chain profiling and formal reviews will enable us to understand capability, capacity of each other's business plans. Our procurement is undertaken in a way that meets with British faults and ISG's expectation that it embraces the ethos of collaboration. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Leon and Alan. Um, just moving on to, to the next question then. Uh, what types of opportunity exist for suppliers and what time frame will these opportunities come along? Yeah, I'm going to take this one, Jochen, here. I mean, if you, if you take a step back and look at what does a giga plant mean and you think about all the products, services, goods, materials we need, and then take the numbers you know uh, about the investment, you can imagine that there is a huge and wide range of opportunities. So it's simply impossible to talk about and list all of them right now. 
but we will have different engagement rules basically to uh, and different timing as well in order to address these issues. We have tailored routes basically that each supplier, uh, each potential supplier is given the appropriate attention and focus. And obviously these routes and the way we apply these mechanisms and tools are depending upon the categories of the goods and services. So you can imagine if we are buying, for example, office material stationery, it's a different approach than buying a hundred million piece of equipment, which is critical for our manufacturing process. Um, Gary and Dan, any, any input from your side on this one? I'll say that. Alan Davidson from NG Burley again. Um, from an NG Burley point of view, you know, due to the scale of the complexity of the project, you know, NG Burley will be sourcing from national and local supply chain. You know, engagement sessions will be administered with many of the category groups with the opportunity for category to the partners and bring the necessary expertise while ensuring that the supplier has the ability and the manufacturer to, you know, to, for the ability of the time skills required. A mitigation plan will ensure that not only one supplier will be overcommitted. In doing so, there will be opportunity for multiple suppliers and manufacturers in one category alone. Due to the manufacturing volumes, uh, local logistic management will be required to, to co coordinate the material storage and minimize uh, impact on um, supply shortage and give diverse locations for materials. So our tendering process will start this month onwards. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Joachim and, uh, and Alan, again. Um, a couple of questions that are re um, related to this category. So we've got a question here from uh, Helen Shaw, Managing Director, Absolute Quality uh, Consultancy and Training. Um, what is the strategy for developing suppliers at different stages of capability throughout the supply chain? Yeah, I take that on as well. Um, obviously, as I said earlier, this is strongly depending on the type of product and the service we are buying. Um, we are intending British Wall to implement a strategic supplier management approach, which will have a, vary, uh, a varying level of engagement. Again, this is depending on the complexity, on the volume we are talking about, and also on the risk product could represent for British volume. But at the end of the day, we are striving to get the best possible supplier performance through a close interaction with our suppliers. So we have a strong interest to, to work closely together and uh, basically not uh, beating each other up, but have a, a common approach how to solve issues. Thank you, Joachim. Um, one more question that's coming from the floor. So this is from Martin Bell, Director of uh, Bell Ventilation Services. How much local labour resources do you estimate to use on this project? Yeah, I'll take that from, engineer, from engineering. Um, short answer is uh, as much as is available. Um, <laughs> absolutely. But due to the uh, specialist nature of certain category groups, um, We'll be exploring the volumes of available resource in the local marketplace. Uh, we will be undertaking engagement sessions and to define, you know, the available opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And again, um, one last question we'll we'll take from the uh, from the floor, which is coming from David Crossman, uh, managing director of Black Hills Products Limited. How much will having ISO accreditation affect your choice of local suppliers? Uh, that's one for me. Uh, very interesting and good question. And I think uh, from my personal opinion is that the main reason for becoming or being an ISO certified company is to help your own business to really understand its processes and then hopefully becoming more effective and productive. Now, British Ward, as I said earlier, we will apply a range of supplier selection criteria, which will be applicable to all the suppliers for specific goods or service. And that is obviously, again, depending on um, what type of product or service this is. It might include ISO certification, but that is not nat naturally a given. So typically, if you look at our OEM customers, BB customers, they require ISO certification throughout the entire supply chain. 
but we will take the liberty to decide on a case by case basis. And then after consultation with our customers where ISO is really mandatory. Uh, thank you, Joachim. Actually, what, one further question uh, has come in, which I think is very pertinent to this. So I'm going to uh, ask one, one, for, one further. It's coming from Daniel Renforth, um, in Industrial Sector Business Development Manager for Whitecroft Lightning. How will sustainability in the circular economy influence product selection? Oh, yeah, I could take that one. It's Louise, uh, again, at NG Bailey. So... Um, the project values and the ESG commitments are underpinned by both sustainability and the circular economy. So the aim of the circular economy is, is the resource efficient and sustainable use of natural resources, their reuse and recycling within a circulatory system and, and the prevention of waste. So this, this project intends to lead the way in, in the circular manufacturing and, and there'll be an expectation and requirements for products to be uh, sustainably sourced. Um, so that includes uh, recycled materials, uh, minimization in waste, uh, low embedded carbon footprint, locally sourced as much as is practically possible. Um, and supply chain partners that, that can demonstrate proactive management, KPIs, which measure and monitor their performance from a sustainable, uh, sustainable and environmental uh, perspective uh, will be viewed positively in the selection process. Um, so that the project's keen to invest in industry 4.0 technologies where we can get maximum efficiency from assets and, and extend those product life cycles. So at the end of a product life, we we'll want to ensure that maximum recycling, reuse or remanufactured options are available. Uh, and the design and concepts around sustainable and circular economy strategies uh, are in the early stages of development, but this is absolutely an aspiration that is already progressing. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you, Louise. So just moving on a couple more questions then. Um, how does British Vault choose and, evol and evaluate suppliers? Um, again, that we have such a variety of requirements and the nature of the good and the service we are buying basically will determine how we're gonna evaluate. And the evaluation methodology and qualification requirements will alter and the key elements, but the key elements of what we're doing are basically set in stone. So there is no one size fits all answer to this, but we will clearly uh, articulate when we go into the different rounds of supplier qualification um, and uh, method, the evaluation methodology, we, we're going to explain what we are doing and how we're doing things. So it's a clear picture for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Joachim. Um, any comment from NG Bailey or ISG? Yeah, fairly similar, to be honest with you, from NG Bailey. Uh, you know, pre-qualification on subcontracts will be considered, you know, the experience on similar projects, uh, previous performance, uh, financial stability, health and safety records, uh, we're interested in their values, uh, your current and future workload, any other matters that would maybe affect the suitability for the project. Uh, at the conclusion of the pre-qualification exercise, a list of suitable subcontractors and suppliers will be prepared for... Uh, a review and endorsement from the professional team. But yeah, thank you. Thank you, Alan. So, um, next question then. Um, what happens next after this outreach session? Is this a one-off? Uh, Paul, thank you. So maybe I can answer this one. Uh, it's uh, Leon speaking. So, so absolutely not. This is not a one-off. This is the first of many. This is part of the ongoing momentum that you'll see um, from British Vault, uh, British Vault Procurement and our partners. Um, this is the first um, and we, we're looking to replicate these going forward. I think Jochen has um, shared really clearly that um, we're going through phases of activity, phases of procurement, phases of, of supplier engagement and we will maintain this drumbeat, we'll maintain activities like this, um, keep answering questions um, and making, us, making sure that we're visible, um, approachable um, all the way through. So um, from, from my perspective, from the, the team at BV, this is definitely not a one-off. Excellent. 
Excellent, thank you. Uh, any comment from either uh, NG Bailey or ISG? Uh, yeah, so from an NG Bailey perspective, um, obviously we've, we've set up this email address specifically for this, this project um, and, and continuous contact going forward and, and outreach sessions are in, in the planning. Um, we are looking at the feasibility of a physical event in the northeast in, la in line with kind of the roadmap out of, uh, out of lockdown. Um, but category meetings will be arranged and we can review our opportunities with your business profiles and, and you know, ju just reiterate as well the points from Tracy. There is a focus on local spend and recruiting locally. Um, where possible, including apprentices and, and priority groups as well, you know, ex-offenders and, and, and others that we can uh, discuss. But social social value mapping as a whole is, is being further researched. We're looking at aligning our activities with the local area needs. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Just to echo those 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 comments from Louise, it's, it's top of our agenda as well to engage with, with the local community and supply chain and and as, as Louise has said as well, there's an ISG email uh, set up, which will be um, forwarded on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right, uh, I think we, we've, we're still getting quite a few questions coming through, but what we'll, we'll do, we will take those offline. And as I said, uh, said earlier, we're looking to produce a frequently asked questions summary uh, and then distribute that out to to everyone who's uh, who's registered for this event today. So, um, if we could just move on to the next slide, please. So yeah, I think I'm handing over to you, Joachim. Yeah, exactly. So how do you and let's let's bring up the next slide, please. Here you can see the different email addresses which have already been mentioned. It looks like that all three partners involved in this call are following the same approach. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. And I want to explain a little bit why we're doing this the way we are doing it. Um, from Bridge World point of view, obviously you can imagine that with all the information going out to the area that a lot of people within British World are getting almost bombarded with requests to become a supplier which is absolutely human and it's understandable. But in order to be able to have a leveled and fair playing field, um, we need to have a tool in place. And this is this inbox, which basically allows us to lock all the interest and the goods and services which can be provided. This is gonna be a database which is work in progress. And we're gonna use this database um, to later um, basically access and get in contact with suppliers who have registered. So please, please register through this email address. Otherwise, it could be that you are not going to be considered. Um, cautionary notice the next one, registering interest does not automatically mean that we will engage basically or that you become a supplier or, or that you get future business. I think that's very important to make this disclaimer. And one of Leon's favorite phrases is not every egg becomes a bird. And I think this is true here as well. Um, obviously, because we are talking about um, many years here um, and we don't know exactly when we will need which type of service or product, we will have an ongoing review of the requirements. We already set up a schedule in Germany and then we will respond when the need for a certain product or, or service uh, arises. What is also important, and that leads us then to the next step of a supply qualification process. Um, there are certain questions and, and general questions we are asking you once you get registered. But when we come more into the selection phase for a certain product or service, we may require your organization to do some more pre-qualification activities together with us or provide data which allows us to do uh, a more detailed evaluation as we deem uh, necessary. Um, I don't know, uh, ING, NG Baby, do you want, do you want ISG, NG Baby, sorry, do you want to, to add something to this from your point of view? Yeah, from NG Bailey point of view, just echo that really, um, you know, qualification will be carried out by the procurement team to discuss the next steps of your inquiry once you've registered, so uh, just to echo what you said really, Josh, thank you. Yeah, same, same from ISG, uh, register your interest, um, we'll deal with every single, um, 
interest that comes through on the inbox, we'll review it and um, evaluate that going forward. <clears throat> so maybe, um, maybe if I just speak on, on this slide. So um, following on from, from Jochen's point, so registration um, and we'll share out the the emails um, as part of the pack which will follow this um, and also the disciplines which are relevant to each of those emails uh, so please watch out for those. Um, I've talked before about behaviours and the way that we operate, the way that we, um, the way that we demonstrate um, our values. Um, very clearly the opportunities and hopefully as you've seen, seen the presentation today in the video and listened to us speak, the opportunities are definitely real, they're here, um, they're, they're upon us. Um, uh, Jochen stole my line about the bird and the uh, and the egg, but uh, I'll, I'll say it again. So you're right. Not not every not every egg becomes a bird, uh, but the way that we engage with our the way that we engage with our suppliers and our supply chain is always going to be open. It's always going to be transparent, and it will always be a a value and a value to us and a value to the supplier. That's our that's our strong hope. Uh, the way that we engage, the way that we qualify the way that we evaluate and also the way that we contract with our suppliers will always have the base uh, principles um, of ESG. So we've heard about ESG today um, as, as its fundamental heart. So that's really important to, to be aware of. So the commitment to, to anybody that can hear my voice right now is the opportunity is real. We'll work with, with, um, with everyone as possible and we'll always do it in a consistent and credible uh, and compliant way. So move along uh, to the next slide, please. So if I share some of the some of the next steps, um, and perhaps just talk through. So um, a pack will follow this um, uh, today's session. Um, this goes on with the, the drum beat, the ongoing mo momentum that I mentioned earlier. Um, so a pack will come out, which will have some FAQs, which will kind of gather all of the questions. And I know we've had uh, a few hundred different questions. Um, so we'll group those uh, and answer those. We're also going to share out the trade listings and the disciplines. Um, so Gary and um, and Adam talked about uh, Alan, sorry, talked about some of the areas specific to NG Bailey and specific to ISG. So we'll share those out, which will help support with the um, the, the, the filtering of which of these emails to go uh, go towards. Um, so the, those are some of the key next steps. And also, please watch out for future events, whereby we'll be able to share more information and update you as to our progress. Thank you. Thank you, Leon. Uh, yep. Timon, could I uh, invite you just to say a few um, closing uh, closing remarks before I um, finish off with some information from the NEA and wrap up? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so I, I really hope that you know this initial presentation and touch point really give you an insight of how at British Vault we want to engage with suppliers, especially local suppliers, and also through our partners in the construction phase. Um, you know, personally, I'm a really true believer of building an ecosystem and cluster strategy. So I think, you know, Paul realized that very quickly when we had the initial discussions also in setting up this event. So it's a really, you know, as Leon mentioned, really an opportunity to get involved. And, you know, I think for, you know, with the Northeast, British Vault has come to the right place to achieve that. And I think the introduction slides, again, just highlighted that, that with the suppliers and the overall supply chain there, you know, we can really establish something that benefits the region. You know, we mentioned it and we made the disclaimer, you know, as you can imagine, for any supplier selection, we will have the appropriate criteria and sourcing criteria to go through, depending on what type of materials or service we source. But at the same time, you know, it's building that momentum across the supply chain. And this should really give you an opportunity that we are aware of you. Because the worst thing that could happen that you have, you know, a superior service or a superior offering to other suppliers, yeah, but we are just not aware of you at the point when we make the sourcing decisions and applying our procurement strategies. This is why the registration is so important that we can pick that up. Um, so once again, you know, I think the interest is, is absolutely huge. So, you know, A, thanks for organizing it, uh, Paul and Laura. And thanks for joining. And, you know, one thing very important, you know, stay safe still in these times, you know, and hopefully, you know, I can see you soon in person. Thank you, Timon. Um, 
just just to close off from an NEA perspective, um, this is obviously a huge and important opportunity for the Northeast and the Northeast economy. So on behalf of all Northeast businesses and the business support networks that have joined us to, to support this event, um, it's great to be able to welcome British Vault to the region. And we look forward to working and supporting you um, with your plans going forward. So thank you. Um, next slide, please, Laura. For, for those on the call, I just wanted to, to highlight that. Um, obviously, I, I highlighted that electrification is a huge opportunity for, um, for the automotive sector and particularly for the, the Northeast. Um, we do have a dedicated program which has been built uh, around our ERDF program, uh, Supply Chain Northeast. Um, any company that SME that is interested in electrification, be it whether you're already in the, the sector or you think there's a, an opportunity to, uh, to support the sector and want to look at uh, exploring and entering the market, this programme could be relevant for you. Um, it'll give you 12 hours of dedicated support. It's fully funded. So please reach out to the NEA if this is of interest to you and we'll, we'll take you through the process of, uh, of, um, of the programme. Next slide, please, Laura. Lastly, um, we've got a uh, electrification supply readiness event. Um, as we said, it's a huge opportunity and we're bringing through some, uh, some other sector specialists to, to work with us on this event. So we'll be working with the IT with Martin Wood, who's a supply chain spe specialist, looking at what the, uh, the UK investment opportunities are uh, around zero emission vehicles. Um, I'll give a quick update just in terms of the, the current landscape. Um, within the NEA, we do have a dedicated working group, which is branded EV North, and that's chaired by uh, Ryan Morn, founder of uh, Avid Technology. And Ryan will give an insight into the activities that group is taking forward. Um, we've also got a presentation from Driving the Electric Revolution, Rain, uh, Rachel Chambers, who's um, COO for Der Centre Northeast. Um, a, a national, nationally significant program um, driving the opportunity around uh, electric machines. Then we've got a presentation from Colin Heron, uh, Zero Carbon Futures, who's going to talk about the electrification infrastructure and the role of batteries and uh, within its uh, within that. And we're finishing off with the Advanced Propulsion Centre, who will take the take you through their. Uh, roadmaps to electrification, there's various platforms that they will take you through to, to highlight what some of the opportunities are and the funding that is being developed and programmes that have been developed to support uh, businesses in this area. Next slide, please, Laura. So that, that just um, uh, concludes the event. Um, we're bang on time there. So I'd like to thank all the, um, the, the presenters, Timon, Leon, Joachim, Tracy, Gary, Dan, uh, Louise and Alan for their contribution today. I'm sure um, everyone who's on the call, all the de delegates who've joined us today have, will take an awful lot from this. But as everyone has, has, has articulated today, this is the start of the process. So please um, watch out for the emails coming through with, with the follow-up emails, the information. Uh, if you do have other, uh, other questions, um, happy for questions to come into the NEA or obviously direct into to British Vault um, there as well. So thank you all for uh, for supporting today. Really appreciate that. And as I say, welcome to the Northeast British Vault. It's great to have you here.